Good morning and thank you so much for being with us. We have a great show lined up. I'm Heather Abraham. As you know, Pittsburgh may be known for our permani sandwiches with French fries on top. But as you know, there is much more to our dining scene. We cannot stay uh, right here in Pitt. We can now stay right here in Pittsburgh rather and still get a taste of the world. The new November issue of Pittsburgh magazine features 16 restaurants we need to visit so we can eat global while staying local. Pittsburgh magazine food critic and associate editor Hal B. Klein had the tough job of sampling all of the food for the cover story, and we're happy to have him here to tell us just some of those 16 restaurants on the list of must visits. <laughs> the pictures are gorgeous, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, first, I think shout out to Laura Petrilla, who shoots for us. Yeah. Uh, her photos are, are really amazing, both Beautiful the food stuff. and portrait photos. And looking through this, I am so jealous. I mean, there's just like amazing pictures in here of all of the food from these 16 different places around town. How did you narrow down your list? So basically, I wanted to find a list of restaurants that were owned by people or had chefs with people that had a really deep connection to the country of the food that they were cooking from. Right. Um, I wanted adventurous, interesting menus. I wanted the, the actual menus to reflect the food of that cuisine instead of just being something that was kind of a generic hodgepodge. I, and then I wanted places to be delicious. I wanted places that people could go and go, holy cow, this is a really amazing, exciting meal. Yeah, and one of your favorite spots is in a kind of like a hot spot neighborhood for some of these uh, restaurants, and that's Squirrel Hill. Yeah, Squirrel Hill is amazing. So Squirrel Hill has all these regionally specific Chinese restaurants. They also have Japanese restaurants and a mm -hmm. few others. And it's one of those places that you can just go and really get food that goes beyond, you know, I grew up eating chicken broccoli, egg rolls, right, kind of generic right, American right, Chinese stuff, food, right? right? Yeah. And now you can go to somewhere like Chengdu Gourmet, which is one of my favorite restaurants, right. and get Sichuan cuisine from a chef who was a James Beard Award semifinalist for Best Chef Mid-Atlantic last year wow. um, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, and eat, you know, mapu tofu, eat uh, Chongqing beef hot pots, and it's it's a really wonderful, exciting place. It's one of my favorite places in Pittsburgh. Yeah, um, definitely have to get your recommendations. I don't know that I would remember those those venue items, but it sounds yeah, all good. Yeah. The pictures look delicious. Yeah, we've got some in the in the story too. And uh, another one is uh, Sakura. Sakura says, yeah, so Sakura was. Sakura. Probably one of my favorite things. So one of the, like, the most exciting things about my job is I get to go to places even that I've walked by a hundred times. Uh -huh. And you know, one day someone goes, oh, you should go in there and try this. And so it's run by a couple who are from Northwestern China. And they've been in Pittsburgh for a really long time. They were cooking uh, at, you know, making sushi and, and doing regular Chinese food. And then someone recognized where they were from, who was from the same province, asked them to make a specific dish. The word got out. People started going in there and asking for more. Suddenly there was a one-page menu, then a two-page menu, then a three-page menu. Then the chef goes back to China to go to culinary school. And, and yeah. now it's this menu with this interwoven dishes so you can get hand-pulled lamb noodles. Wow. Um, and it's really wonderful and delicious. And what about Cafe 33? Yeah, it's another thing. So I think one of the most important things in this story is for people to go to the restaurants with a really open mind mm -hmm. and go and look at the menu. And even if there are things they are not familiar with, ask questions, ask the servers, say, what can I get? I want to try things that are new. And so Cafe 33 has some dishes, um, like a pork intestine dish, that might not be the first thing that you'd want to order, yeah, right? Yeah, no, I don't think that that sounds but, appetizing to uh, me. Yeah, but, but it's delicious. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll take your word and for so, it. And if you're, you know, if, you're, if you're open enough to try that, you can do that. If not, you can try something um, like a scallion egg pancake that's made in layers, that's house made. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of things in between. And this is also Asian cuisine? Yeah, yeah. And what about chaya? So chaya is Japanese and it's exciting. So it's a chef that is over a 40 year career um, and he really knows what he's doing. He built all, he hand built all the woodwork. Also, I found out talking to him. Yeah. Um, so that's like one of the exciting things about this story too, is you really get to meet the people that run the place and put a face on it. And we really did that with the story too that's in print and online is to show everyone. Um, and you can get a full kaiseki menu there. Um, which is a long course dinner, which is you'll get a lot of dishes that you might normally get at a, at a Japanese restaurant. Well, and plus you get to try new things too, which yeah, is the important is part the about part. trying something new. And we want to we want to move over to um, some international restaurants people may not expect to find. And, mm -hmm. and what are these? What tops your list here? So uh, there's one Udupi, which has actually been around since 1996, and that's a restaurant that if you're a vegetarian or if you're a fan of Indian cuisine, you probably know about already. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, you'd be really surprised to know that just off kind of a highway in Monroeville, there is this restaurant that is cooking. I mean, you can see the photo right now, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and they make dosas, these lentil pancakes that are, are soft and puffy and crispy. Um, and everything there is all vegetarian. Uh, it's all 
entirely delicious. It's yeah. really exciting. Well, and so not everything is going to be in downtown Pittsburgh or in, right. you know, these in Pittsburgh in the right. city limits. What about Royal Mo Myanmar? Royal Myanmar, yes. Yeah. So this yeah. is a restaurant that's run by two friends um, that they are both from what used to be called Burma. Uh, they came over and they're cooking things. Uh, there's tofu there is made from chickpeas instead of uh, soybeans. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got uh, these chickpea tofu dishes. They have this fermented tea leaf salad that's really funky and rich and enjoyable. Um, they're also one of the warmest places I've ever been. I mean, just to go in there and just the, the friendly way, environment. friendly yeah. and yeah. And I think that's important too. I think it's great, yeah. And what about Leon's Caribbean? I love Leon's Caribbean. This, so this sounds is, so good. Yes, this is a Jamaican restaurant in Allentown mm -hmm. and it's become a real community center up there too. And I mean, Leon is, he left Jamaica in 1979, worked on cruise ships, worked in New York, but he has just kept his culture and kept his heritage and is that. cooking oh. dishes. Yeah, he's making jerk chicken and ceviche fish. And it's, you know, it's, it's, you go in, it's bare bones. It's just this little, you know, box place. Everything's served in styrofoam containers, but then you start eating and it's, it's delicious. Suddenly it's, you know, it's pigeon peas and rice and it's a yeah. great restaurant. And there are two restaurants also that, that top your list. And this is um, kind of like a, uh, Pittsburghers retaining their connection as yeah. well. And what are these places? This is Hoosar? Did yeah, I so right? Hoosar is a, is a really cool story. So Hoosar is actually a bar that's been owned by the same family for quite a while. Um, and a woman named Judy took it over from her father after he passed away. And this um, one's it's in Hungarian. And, no, it's oh, on the north side. The north side, right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And she decided, so she grew up, you know, going back to Hungary a lot. Her parents actually fled. Her mom was pregnant with her, but didn't know it mm -hmm. when they were fleeing Hungary as refugees. Um, so, you know, we think a lot about refugees right now yeah. and what's happening in the world. In 1956, there was a similar crisis happening in Hungary. And her parents fled. They, they fled in, a, I think, it was like in the back of a truck, and then they ran through the woods. And her mom didn't know it at the time, but she was pregnant with Judy. Wow. And now Judy's really kind of taken that back full circle. And they've got great live music a couple like once a week really great hungarian food it's so it's a wonderful place and you also have s and d polish yeah which is list. in the strip which mm -hmm. is you know the heart of, of pittsburgh food in a lot of ways and again it's a couple that opened this polish deli because they wanted to taste from home they've since sold it to some other people but they're keeping the spirit of it there are two uh, polish women that run the kitchen and you can get dishes, um, so pierogi, of course, right. is a popular of seller. <laughs> but, and borscht is a popular seller and sausages, but you can also get tripe soup and, and soup made from dried forest mushrooms from Poland. Really great and stuff. And so, yeah, really get a taste of home. Yeah, if you are looking for a place to try, you definitely want to check out the November issue. A lot of really great stuff and gorgeous photos as well. You can read more about eating globally at these local restaurants in the new November issue of Pittsburgh Magazine. It's online and on newsstands now. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh,